Thank you. Uh, thanks for that kind introduction, Thomas. As you said, today I'll be telling you about the Beaker Notebook, which is a user interface for doing data analysis, data visualization, and uh, research in general. And in particular, I'm going to tell you about the advanced user interface features that we've put into it and its polyglot architecture. So Beaker can work with many languages. And together, this allows scientists to focus on their data and on their science instead of getting distracted you know, by their tools and by programming. And in particular, I want to uh, go back to something that uh, Wes said this morning, which is, you know, he was saying, you know, it would be great if there were some ways that all these uh, data languages could work together. And uh, I'd like to propose Beaker as one possible solution or one way forward in, in that direction. So, but first let me tell you about notebooks. You might not need that much convincing that uh, notebooks are a good user interface metaphor. Uh, here's some pictures of some historical scientific notebooks. You might recognize the one in the lower left uh, with the anatomical drawings by Leonardo and the one in the lower right by Albert Einstein. In fact, the idea of a notebook and recording data in writing is practically the foundation of science. And there's all kinds of things that go into a notebook. Data, images, sketches, prose, ideas, coffee stains, and uh, all the sort of detritus of a scientist's life. But what we'd like to do is update this tool for the digital age. And here are some screenshots of Beaker notebooks. You can see they have some of the same stuff in them. They have tables of data, they have charts and graphs, they have typeset mathematical equations, and they have prose, normal written text. But most importantly, they have code, computer code, uh, which is text which can be executed. And that begs the question of you know, what language is that code written in? And Beaker doesn't uh, predispose an answer to that question. Because we leave the language as a variable. So here's a list of the major languages that Beaker supports currently. Uh, Python and Python 3, of course, are first on that list. But, and so are the other popular data science languages like R and Julia. But also JavaScript, which is an important language for user interaction, and other standard languages like, uh, like Java and Ruby and Scala. K, the, for the K database, if you've ever seen that one. And uh, we think this is useful for a number of reasons. For one, if you're working on a problem, uh, there's usually many different sort of parts to that problem, or many different stages, because you don't really know where, when you're doing research, you don't really know where uh, it's going to take you. And you know, each of these languages was created for a reason. And each language out there has its strength, which is usually the topic that the creator of that language happened to work on. And with Beaker, you can solve each part of your problem in the language which is best suited for that part and seamlessly move uh, between all of them. Another reason you might want to use multiple languages is, is for collaboration. You might really like Python, but you're working with somebody who really likes R. With Beaker, you can work on, on the same notebook and uh, pass data back and forth uh, and without getting into a fight over it. Another reason is, what if you are, you know, picked some language to do your project in and halfway through, 
you realize, oh my gosh, you're reading the, uh, some blog and you see a post that announces a new library that you really want to use, but it's in Java. What are you going to do? Well, with, with Beaker, you can just drop a Java cell into your notebook and, uh, and access it. So here's like a little sketch at the bottom of this slide showing uh, a hypothetical workflow. You might start out in Python, scraping the web and reading Reddit, and then import that into an R cell where you do some regression or analysis, and then, uh, then do a visualization in JavaScript, maybe with the D3 library. Now, having multiple languages uh, just by itself is only the beginning of the uh, situation because those, langu those languages need to communicate. And Beaker provides a mechanism that we call auto-translation for doing that. And the bottom of the slide has a, really, has a trivial uh, example showing how that works. What we do is we define a sort of a magic object called the Beaker object, which exists in all the languages. And if you set a field on the Beaker object, in this case, uh, in Python, we say beaker.x equals 10, then that data becomes available in the other languages. So then in a JavaScript, you can just say beaker.x plus 1, and you get the result 11. So we use metaprogramming on the Beaker object to, to make this work. And not every language, though, supports exactly you know, this uh, nice interface. So there's also some sort of, uh, you can also make function calls to, to access these, uh, this data. And as the uh, diagram illustrates, we use a hub and spoke model for this, uh, for our architecture. You know, the idea of communicating between languages has been around uh, for a very long time in computer science. And if you implement the connection on a, from each language to each other language, you quickly end up with a combinatorial explosion of possibilities. So to avoid that, Beaker uh, uses JSON as the universal interchange format. And we, use, we picked JSON because Beaker is fundamentally a, a web application. It runs in your web browser. And, so, and it's primarily written in JavaScript. So uh, JSON was a natural choice. There are definitely, however, some, uh, some downsides to just pure JSON. And so we've augmented it with a type system so that more complex objects can be transmitted through auto translation and come out uh, the other side with the right, uh, in the right type. So very quickly, here's a diagram with the architecture of Beaker. I don't want to go into it too deeply, but I want to highlight the Python part for this audience. And in particular, I want to point out that IPython, uh, not just Python, is, is in the diagram. And that's because when you execute Python code in Beaker, you're actually accessing an IPython backend. So if you already have IPython installed with a whole bunch of packages and maybe it's a, a tricked out version that you maybe have under development yourself, that's fine. You can, you can still use it uh, with Beaker. We're just providing a, a front end, a, a layer, uh, a, a new user interface for, to accessing the languages that you already have and know and, and love. So let me uh, cut to the demo portion of, of the talk. So instead of, So very quickly, uh, the most basic thing that you can do in Beaker is, of course, edit text. And uh, we use Markdown 
And so here's a markdown cell, and if you just click on it, then you get the markdown source, you know, which you can change with nice uh, text highlighting and uh, do whatever you want. You can also, here's, you can, there's uh, display math in here also. Oops. We use KTEC to do the, uh, to do the uh, uh, mathematical formatting, and there's Unicode and HTML entities. So it's really a sort of a free form uh, environment for writing text. You can put all kinds of stuff in there. In section headings, you can put markdown and LaTeX right in a section heading. And we have the sections you can actually open and close so that you can hide and show uh, the hierarchy of your document. Here's you can do HTML. HTML is just another language and you can do that right in your document also. So here's uh, my first sort of executable demo. This is really straightforward. You've probably seen uh, something very much like this. So the, here's a, a matplotlib chart and it's, you know, the image is saved right in the notebook. You can change the code, run it again, get something else. Um, here's something a little more advanced. Here's pulling down a data frame from Yahoo. And what's nice here is that in, instead of just showing up as like static HTML, you actually get a nice interactive um, chart here where you can like click on columns to sort it. You can go down, you can see there's many pages to this data because there's quite a bit of it. Um, and you can generally, we have an interactive spreadsheet widget to, uh, to make exploring the data easy. Now, one thing that's interesting is in this code, you can see here's, and here's how you access the beaker object. I, I assigned the data frame spy to the beaker object. And then not only is that available for auto translation, but it's actually saved in the notebook. And so this next cell, because the data is in the notebook, you don't have to put it in a CSV file. Uh, you can just run this and get the, the chart. And here's where you, the value is read out of the beaker object. So that can be useful even when you're not um, communicating between languages. So in, here's a more advanced example where I'm communicating a whole data frame uh, from Python into R. So here's, here's some pandas code where I'm reading a CSV file and then doing some uh, manipulation, whatever you want to do in Python. And then you can see, but maybe I, I happen to like, like R's uh, charting functions. It uh, looks like the uh, live demo factor has gone a little south here. So let me just switch to the uh, next one here. So here's an example of doing real inter-language uh, communication. So here's an example of generating a random graph in Python. And by graph, I mean like a social network kind of a graph. And then here in, uh, H I'm gonna create an HTML cell to store the results. And then here's some JavaScript code that does uh, a D3 visualization of that, of that data. And this was pretty much, this D3 code was pretty much copied you know, right off the D3 examples website. And you can see here's where it pulls the data out of the beaker object. And uh, if I just 
You could also look at it this way, but you know, that's not as much fun. So uh, you can also access uh, Spark. We have the, the PySpark language. Here's uh, an example of searching a, uh, the text of this book, counting all the words, and creating a uh, histogram of what's in there. And one final demo, a corollary of being able to run Python, uh, being able to run multiple languages is the ability to run Python 2 and Python 3, which are effectively different languages at the same time in the same notebook. So, uh, and this comes in handy when you want to use a library uh, that doesn't exist in the current, in the version of Python that you're using in the rest of your project. So here's an example where uh, this mechanized library only exists in Python 2, so that's great for scraping the web. And here's um, uh, pulling down the a web page and assigning it to the beaker object and previewing some of the text that's there. And then in Python 3, I'm going to uh, process the contents of that web page and then visualize it again with D3. It's as simple as that. So, to review, uh, we, Beaker is designed with a, to allow data scientists to explore and do their research, and it has an advanced user interface with a polyglot architecture so that uh, you can focus on your data and your science instead of being distracted or frustrated by your tools. And Beaker Notebook is open source. It's on GitHub. We have a website. Uh, there's a Twitter handle. If you, should to, if you want to uh, follow our updates, and uh, it's being developed at Two Sigma, and uh, we are trying to grow the team, so if anybody here uh, wants to join us, you know, please uh, let me know. Th thank you very much, and I'll take questions if there's time. We have about one minute for one or two very quick questions, so I will come and try and get you with the microphone. Can this run an outer browser as well? You can run it on a server and connect to it, if that's what you mean. And we've also actually just developed a native version using the Electron, so it's just a, a regular app that doesn't use a web browser at all. Okay. Um, how do you, um, uh, so Beaker obviously knows sort of the structure of some kinds of Python types if you're serializing them and then sending them to another language. So that's right. is there some way that I, if I write my own object that's like a data frame but you know, has my own special features, is there some protocol that allows me to tell Beaker how to understand my objects? Yeah, uh, we have a, a rudimentary way of extending the type system, but it's, uh, it's not really released and documented yet. So it's, that's under development. It's probably going to be another three or four months. So right now, it recognizes a lot of standard types like data frames and arrays and dictionaries and images and date times and, you know, uh, but the user extension is still a work in progress. And that's probably all the time we've got, so thank you very much.